Good morning and welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Christmas. It's good to be with you today as we are all gathered online due to weather. Um, I would like to especially welcome anybody who might be joining us for the first time today. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, You can download a bulletin with the order of service from the link in the video description below. As we gather for worship, I'd like to acknowledge that um, our church building and many of us members are gathering on the traditional homelands of the Sukhabaj, who are the swift water people, a member, members of the uh, Spialapaj, the Pialap nation. The Spialapaj have been in this area, the land we now know as the southern Puget Sound, uh, for thousands of years, faithfully stewarding these lands and waters as they continue to do today. Before we begin our worship, I'll take just a moment to invite us to share any prayer concerns or requests you might have. Uh, You can put those uh, requests in the chat or in the comments now. Um, I will share that uh, Harlan had a um, hernia repair surgery this last week and is home and is is doing well. Things went very well and uh, um, when I last talked to him, he was not feeling great, but um, I was told that he's going to be doing much better soon. So thanks for prayers for Harlan. With that, let's uh, take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds for worship. I'll invite you to please rise as you are able and join me in the confession as it's printed on your screen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and to cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the weak. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put our love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us 
and a child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your goodwill, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 2. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she has made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and through him all things came into being. Without him not one thing came into being, and what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world. And the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. Children who were born not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has seen him and has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Almost everything we think about when we think of Christmas can be visualized in the nativity scene. These static figurines ranging from tiny to life-size or larger have come to embody the Christmas holiday for us. We tend to think of that first Christmas night as serene and calm as the newborn baby sleeps silently in that snug manger, surrounded quietly by adoring shepherds and wise men. Everything is as still and as peaceful as the porcelain figures that sit on our mantles or adorn our lawns. These tableaus help us tell an important part of the Christmas story by helping us to imagine an actual human baby and the actual human people who were drawn to witness his birth. But they don't tell the whole story. In the midst of our messy and constantly moving world, the peaceful vignette of a nativity scene seems so distant sometimes as to almost be a fairy tale, a representation of an event that never happened or could never happen in the chaos of the world that we know. And that's why John's story is so important for us to share at Christmas, even if it does seem a little bit out of place. It's hard for us to make sense of Christmas without the baby Jesus, without the manger. With no baby, there are no herald angels singing, no shepherds in the field abiding, no silent night or midnight clear, no little town of Bethlehem, no three wise men coming from country far by the light of yonder star. And yet this is the holiday that St. John gives us, devoid of all these things, all these familiar trappings. The picture John paints for us is not of a world at peace and stillness while a child is born, but a world shrouded in shadow, in chaos, in evil, in death and of the divine light of life entering into that darkness. In the spirit of holiday cheer and the festivity of the season, I think John's image of Christmas is much more like the world as we know it. Not far beneath the thin veneer of holiday joy, there lies the same trouble that overshadows our world every other day of the year. Wars continue to rage. Conflicts continue to boil. People continue to flee and suffer and die. 
while the stationary serenity of the nativity scene gives us hope for the peace that will be one day, it does not say much about the sin and darkness that swirl around us now. Instead of a world that seems to pause to recognize the birth of a Savior, John tells us of a world stumbling blindly forward, oblivious to the Savior already present, a world which owes him its entire existence, but which does not even recognize him, a world that continues spinning on through the endless night, where people continue machinating and scheming oppressing and exploiting one another, fighting and killing and dying in the darkness, heedless of the light shining among them and within them. This sounds like the world we know, a world bathed in darkness, living in fear, fear of war, fear of climate change, fear of pandemic, fear of government overreach, fear of the loss of the familiar. As strangers encounter one another in this darkness, we fear each other. We huddle together in our little tribes, seeking safety within our bubbles and painting horrible pictures of the enemies that surround us, who wish to destroy us and our way of life. We sharpen our spears and steel our nerves to fight not only on battlefields, but in legislatures and public forums and internet comment sections. We've become so afraid of one another in the dark that every moving shadow prepares us to kill or be killed. On Christmas, we celebrate that into the midst of this dark world, the true light has come. While we throw up our walls and our barriers and our checkpoints to separate ourselves from our enemies and to keep ourselves safe, to keep us separate from the people we have come to believe are too stupid or too malicious or simply too foreign to ever let into our safe space, we remember that in this time, God has torn through our barriers, through the very veil between heaven and earth itself, to become human, to become one of us. While we are busy separating ourselves from one another with politics and ideologies and labels, God becomes one with us in flesh and blood and spirit and truth. We try to save ourselves by isolating ourselves from those who are different from us. We close borders and gentrify neighborhoods. We draw boundaries on race and class and political opinion. It is this separation that creates the fear and the hatred that cloud and obscure our vision. But God chooses to step in and save us by shedding light on our story, by slipping into our skin to experience our hopes and our joys, our fears and our sorrows alongside us. The word made flesh teaches us to step out in faith across those borders, to walk across the no man's land and to enter into the experiences of the other, to come to see and to know the light of another, to see and to know one another in the light of God, to even come to love each other. Instead of a motionless nativity scene, Christmas is embodied in the movement of people toward one another, mirroring the movement of Christ toward us. This is what John means when he says that Jesus gives us the power to become children of God. Jesus transforms us to be like our Father, to become incarnate, fully present to one another. And in doing so, to be able to see the light of life that shines within all people, the true light of the word of God through whom all things came into being. Through the incarnation of Jesus at Christmas, God has given us each the power to become fully incarnate to one another. We often think of Christmas as being primarily about the story of a child, the baby Jesus lying in a manger, but it is as much about the story of all the children of God learning to see one another in the light of the world. 
The nativity scene reminds us that when Jesus became human, he was born not among the rich or the well-educated or the powerful, but among the poor. Because he lived among us as the poorest of us, he knew their struggles. He learned to love them for who they are when privileged and the elite did not. As children of God, we also have been given the power to live and to work, to struggle and to love among those whom the world has, has taught us to disdain, to learn to love as Jesus does. We have been given this ability not because of where we are or to whom we are born, not because of the will of the flesh or the will of a man, but because we have been reborn as people of the Spirit. At Christmas, we celebrate the light of the world which came into our darkness and still shines there. We celebrate that because the darkness has not overcome him, it cannot and it will not overcome us. The light of the world shines within us, and we have the power to shine that light into all the dark corners and the forgotten crevices of the world where people still huddle in fear of one another. For we have been enlightened with the light of life. Christmas is a celebration of God becoming one with us, giving us the power to become one with one another. We celebrate the incarnation of Christ because whenever we become incarnate to each other, whenever we cross those borders that divide us and reach out to love and bring joy in the midst of fear, we are children of God. Christmas never was a single moment to be captured in the nativity dioramas that we see everywhere this time of year. Christmas always has been and always will be a recognition and a celebration of the living, moving God who continues to break into our existence, to shine light into our darkness. Christmas is a moment of clarity a time to pause and look around and recognize Christ where he has always been. In the birth of a baby in Bethlehem, yes, but also in the bread and wine at the table, broken for us. In the faces of our friends and neighbors and even our enemies around us. Sanctified and sent out to be messengers of God's good news. To see him in the poor and the hungry and the outcast among us inviting us into relationship with them. Even in those people that we have been taught to hate and to fear. Today we celebrate that Christmas has come into the world, excuse me, we celebrate that Christ has come in the wor into the world to bring us release from fear. To be one of us and to teach us to be one with each other. He is the light of truth and love, shining in the darkness. And today we bear witness that the darkness does not and cannot overcome it.
joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighted down by grief, loss, poverty, or injustice. Help us to look with compassion on all. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation. Teach us that our service to the natural world is a service to you. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in those relationships. Turn us away from mean thoughts and actions. Help us to recognize the Christ child in one another. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You come to us through the forgotten ones, poor shepherds, and an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are jailed. Send your spirit to all who are unwell. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Clothe us in love. Bind us together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, receive our prayers. For what and for whom do the people pray? Merciful God, receive our prayers. You come to us through those who have died and yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon, and martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Rejoicing in your word made flesh, we commend our prayers to you confident of your grace made known to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of that peace now with one another, uh, with a chat or a phone call or a text message to somebody you care about.
God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew us in the song of your salvation. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As we join together in Christ's meal, let us pray. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together in this meal, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your truth. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome at Christ's table with whatever we may have to share the meal. If you are not partaking in the meal this morning, then receive this blessing. May Christ be present incarnate in your life this day and forevermore. Amen. If you are receiving the meal today, hear this promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ strengthen and preserve you in life that is abundant and eternal. Amen. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.
Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Before we conclude today, uh, just have a few announcements for us. Um, first of all, uh, I am actually gone today. I'm on a plane on my way to Minnesota, uh, here with you through the miracle of technology. Uh, the rest of the staff are off this week as well, so the, the office is going to be closed all week. Um, if you do have any uh, end-of-year donations you'd like to make um, to be recorded in this year, please get them to the church office by Friday. Uh, you can mail them in or leave them in the mailbox at the church, uh, and our counters will be in to get that uh, this week. Also, something else coming up uh, in January, uh, we're going to try something new. We've got a, an ecumenical youth group that's going to get together once a month. Uh, this is a joint venture between us at Anya Stay and our friends at St. John Episcopal and uh, Gig Harbor United Methodist and Fox Island UCC. Uh, we're getting all of our youth together to try and do a, a youth group kind of a program here. Um, the four pastors of these congregations will be leading it. So uh, that will happen on January 23rd. That's a Sunday in the evening. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I want to say it's uh, 6 p.m., but we'll have more information on that. That'll be, information will be on our website. If you or anyone you know would be interested in attending that, you are more than welcome. It would be helpful if you let uh, me know ahead of time so I know how many to plan for, but if you're unable to RSVP or you just forget, that's fine. Please still show up. We'd love to have you. With that, uh, that's all the announcements I have, and so I'll invite us to join together in our sending hymn. Savior. Thanks be to God.